Hmm. What was played at the dance hall was not heard on radio. By that period when cassettes came in, people were recording what was happening at the dance hall, and that's where the, 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 the dance hall fans were beating down the fence because that was live stuff. The mic was there and everybody impromptu. Whatever was popular in the dance that came out on the cassette, the producer wanted to find that artist to make a hit of it. Once the record producers took note, the sound system DJs took center stage and Dancehall's first major star was born. A most unlikely of icons, the six-foot albino yellow man. Yellow man's stock in trade was sex, or as Jamaicans call it, slackness. I used to talk about sexy things, you know, things that the girls love and what they want here because ladies like to hear when a man talk nice thing about them, you know. That's the reason why I do the song called Over Me, them a man over me. Some girls, them a them a love me, them. Albinos or Dundus, as they are known in Jamaica, were the island's outcasts. So when Yellow Man held himself up as a kind of sex symbol, people howled with laughter. The joke was, look at your pigmentation, look at your looks. And you were talking about girls. People, people apparently bought that just out of the fun, but they weren't understanding the statement being made. This guy's not supposed to be behind a microphone. He's supposed to be somewhere getting therapy. Over me, the mama over me. Just cool, just cool. It's not right to call yellow man a fool. You're just cool. I go up in an orphan to job, Alpha Boy School. I have a hard time, you know, because children, they, 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 they weren't playing with me, right? If I used to be alone by myself because of the color. Even when, um, when I go in the line for food, everybody used to come out the line. They used to wait till me first or everybody go before me, you know, so it was very hard for me. That made me stronger in my heart, you know, and knowing that the same people come back to respect me and love me, that make me feel good, you know, make me feel comfortable, you know. And I respect that, you know? Yeah. So, King. Here's this yellow man who was once scorned, and people now want to have his baby. And everything was yellow, his yellow BMW. You know, rags to riches started reaching him. And even the tax man in Jamaica went after him. Yeah. Yellow man's local success came to the attention of CBS Records in New York. He became the first Jamaican recording artist to sign to a major U.S. label. When Yellow Man first came to the U.S., he came to New York. When he came to New York, he went to Harlem. He had on a gray three-piece with a white shirt and a gray tie, gray clocks, and a gray beaver. Come in the room for him. What Yellow Man found in New York was a small but developing dance hall scene. We were doing a whole lot of dance hall, a whole lot of sound system. These little venues that we could rent and keep dancers at. You know, and, and it worked good for a while until they started taking away their liquor license. Because, you know, all these West Indians came into these so called dances and didn't know how to act. <laughs> it was predominantly um, West Indian kids that were at these dances. I'm sure there were you know, a couple of Americans who were fascinated with the Caribbean culture, yeah, would probably go there, but for the most part it was West Indian kids. 
The number of curious black New Yorkers at these dance halls soon increased as they became more aware of the links between this Jamaican music and